everybody and welcome to another product review video. This week we're going to jump into Liquitex Acrylic Gauche, Gouache, Guiches. Uh, look, we're going to talk about a new paint range I really like. Let, let's just get over the desk. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. All name. right, so let's talk about these Liquitex Acrylic uh gauche gouache gouache look i don't know how to pronounce this word and i'm not gonna lie to you and pretend like i do i don't know how to pronounce most any words so this is just not even in the realm of possibility but this is a paint range that i've recently gotten a big uh, amount of and i really like so let's talk about the basics first you may be familiar with these acrylic gou gouaches gauches gouache quiches before we're gonna call them quiches from now on with these acrylic quiches uh there are other sort of this exists as a concept oftentimes they're used in watercolor paintings they don't have the same binder in them so they'll reactivate that's sort of the ones i've used before these do these are traditional acrylic paints once they set they do not reactivate they're just like everything else these are an artist paint so they're not a, really intended for miniature painting uh, you'll notice I have two different size bottles here. These little bottles, which are 22 milliliters, so just slightly more than most of the uh, bottles you're going to get for miniature painting, come in a 12 pack for about $50, $55, depending on where you buy it. US, obviously, that's going to vary around the world. Um, I got mine from uh, my local art store. You can also get it from Amazon and stuff like that. Um, these bigger individual bottles have, tend to vary a little in price. Um, depends where you get them from. Some places like Dick Blick have them, uh, and so stuff like that. Uh, these tend to be anywhere between uh, $11 and $15 per bottle. Uh, so again, they will vary because they're artist paints, and so hence, because of the different pigments that are used, they're using high quality pigments, hence they will vary in cost based on the cost of that pigment. Um, so big bottles are expensive, but you are getting 60 milliliters, as you can see, basically in there, 59. Uh, so in this case, it's more than three times uh, our regular paint bottles. So on that regard, they're actually about the same as what we pay for miniature paint. Um, if you figure you're getting, you know, 17 milliliters for about three to four dollars, then paying, you know, 11 or 12 for three times, that's pretty much right in line. Um, though, if you're going to buy the entire range in these big bottles, you are going to lay out quite a lot of cash. Uh, as artist paints, they give us a lot of information, which is fantastic. They come in a range from single pigment, as you can see, this is, uh, like the, this one right here is single pigment. So the magenta is just using your traditional PR 122, the basic magenta pigment you see most of the time. Uh, same with the primary red and the dioxazine purple, again, PV, uh, 23 and PV 19, exactly what you would expect. Um... But then they also have mixtures, but nicely they do actually lay out all of the different pigments that are used in the mixture. And if there's ratios, they'll give you the ratios. Uh, they also are uh, light fast, as they say on the side. They have an excellent light fastness rating, so they will hold up. Um, you can also see the opacity, so that's the little square right here. Um, basically, you can see the red is marked as semi-opaque. That's what that little square means, whereas the black means opaque. Uh, so you get a lot more information than you do when you buy miniature paints. You know the pigments that, you're in, that are in them. Uh, everything is very clear. You know how they're going to mix. Uh, the range of colors in this is actually pretty large. Now, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a miniature paint range from Vallejo or something, right? But there is quite a good range. There's about 40 different colors in this. So you can get quite a wide range. You don't have to just mix, which is an advantage over other uh, artist paint ranges. A lot of them, you end up really needing to get very comfortable very fast with mixing. And some paint colors are just hard to figure out how they got there, you know, exactly what they added in what ratios to get to that point. You do not deal with that with these, uh, or at least as much. Um, they obviously cover the whole spectrum of the rainbow quite well, so um, including fluorescent colors, which are also good. Uh, but of course, enough of the preamble uh, talking about price and the amount you get and stuff like that. Your question is, but Vince, how do they paint? Great question. Let's get out of mini and let's see how they do. All right, so 
Let's talk about the palette, the paint itself. First of all, I really like the design of the bottle. The top just pops off nice and easy right there. And you can see they've got this little tip. We just go ahead and pop a little paint right out there onto the thing. Boom, easy, breezy cover girl. Let's bring that over. Now, these, as you can see, are thicker paints, but they're not super thick. As I spread them out, you know, they look very much like maybe slightly thicker miniature paints uh, than, than we'd be used to. But as they are quite pigment rich, they thin out really well. So you can do everything from your normal work to wet blending down to very thin glazing and filtering with absolutely no issue. Um, I found that they're all really pigment rich. They're artist grade paints. So you really do get your money's worth out of that bottle. Uh, let's get a miniature in here and actually show these in action. All right, here we have our fun centaur fellow. Let's start with a little purple. Uh, as you can see, we're just going to thin it down some here. And then let's just give it a little, little paint. Uh, we'll start on his armor plate here. Turn that a nice purple. Now, what I have found is that some of these paints do have a uh, honestly slightly lower opacity than what it says on the bottle. Um, that is to say, the coverage is decent, but not exceptional. Um, so if you are talking base coating, they do work well over something like a Zenithal, but with a lot of them, they are still quite strong. It's not weak paint, not by any stretch of the imagination. It's just if you're going to take the color over a, you know, straight black or something as usual, you'll need to uh, apply multiple thin coats to get there. So not that much different than the paints we'd be used to. Um, at the same time, we can, of course, mix them without issue, again, because we have two single color paint, sig sorry, single pigment paints. We end up with a really nice uh, ability to mix and get something that's a clean mixture between the two colors uh, without any issue. So we can get a nice rich uh, purple there, much more red infused, and as you can see, covers that rather nicely. So something over a zenithal or a brighter color you'll generally get a pretty true, pretty uh, solid opacity out of it. Um, the colors themselves, uh, like I said, do come in a wide range. What you would expect is the ones that are, uh, that have a lot more variation in the pigments are the ones that where you can end up with mixes that don't cover as well. Uh, not too surprising there, given that you're talking about you know, when you start getting three or four pigments in the mix, even though they're all listed, uh, you're still going to end up in a situation where it's very likely that some of those pigments that are in there are a little transparent and aren't going to cover quite as well as you want. Um, things like this peach, though I absolutely love it for the tone, is a good example of where that happens. Um, some of the more intense single pigment colors, uh, like, the, uh, like the dioxazine purple, uh, like the primary red, honestly produce a little stronger results, especially over brighter undershades. But uh, that doesn't really matter. Like I said, we, we're when you're dealing with artist paints, you have to accept that if they're not going to put thickeners in them or something like that to, to beef them up, you're going to have some that just don't have full opacity because that's the nature of the different pigments. When you're dealing with these different pigments, some of them are not going to cover as well. That is simply the reality of the pigment in question. But as you can see, they go on really, really smooth. I actually love the the sort of uh, way these things flow off the brush with just a little bit of water in there, and they're good to go. Um, so I've absolutely been enjoying the heck out of painting with these. Um, they just come right off. They produce a very smooth, very flat, very matte result. Uh, most of them are quite matte, um, which is the whole point of the quiche. Gouache, gouche, quiche, gouche. Um, they, uh, those are basically the, that word really just means very matte paint. Um, so the advantage to these is they are super duper matte when they go on, allowing you to, uh, know you're going to get a good quality result that doesn't produce a bunch of unexpected glossiness, no real need to suddenly matte them out or anything like that. We can see how when we, uh, get our second coat on here, now that this is dry, we do get it up to full opacity very easily. No issue, easy peasy. So overall, these things are really, really fun. I've had a great 
time painting with this paint. Um, I do recommend it if you like artist paints, if you're looking for a good range. I find it to be something in like a Chimera or the Golden So Flats. It's very similar to both of those for me. Um, some of the yellows in my testing performed a little better than either of those ranges. Um, so I enjoyed that. Like I like their, their primary yellow and their yellow ochre a little more than uh, either of the Golden or the... Um, uh, the Golden or the Chimera. Uh, these are also a little more consistent in their uh, viscosity, I guess I would say, than uh, some of the uh, some of the Chimeras because a lot of the Chimeras will vary. Some are super liquidy, some are super jelly and, and thick. These you get pretty much the same exact experience out of every bottle. I haven't seen really any variation between all of them. Uh, great control, great viscosity, great flow um, the whole way through. So I've just been having a, a grand old time painting with them, uh, finding them very pleasurable to paint. So there you go. That's uh, that's the, the paint in action. Uh, I hope that you can uh, see how easy um, that is to work with as I'm painting behind his axe like a genius. Um, but yes, as I said, so for any of your normal miniature painting purposes, these are a great option. A little more expensive, but overall great to paint with. So I really like these. Overall, I give them an A. Um, they're definitely worth a pickup. I have uh, picked up a bunch of the range uh, and just have been having a great time painting with it. Uh, if you are looking for a new paint range and you want to try mixing a little more, not as much as maybe you would have to do with a Golden or with Chimera or something, but you want to try a little more mixing, this could be the way to go for you. The saturation is incredible. The uh, ability to uh, really get some nice, intense popping colors has been something I've really enjoyed. And maybe you'll enjoy it too. If you liked this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for more product reviews in the future. Don't forget we've got a Patreon down below if you want to support the channel and take your next step on your hobby journey uh, with a bunch of awesome folks uh, in our Discord community who've already joined up. But as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.